verse 1. I'll wait till you get there. And I pray everyone on the internet, you turn in your pages or go into the scriptures on your phones or your computers. All right. Ezekiel 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. So this is uh, the prophet Ezekiel, right? And see, God has taken him, amen, in the spirit to a place, amen? So this is something that's not in the natural. This is something in the spirit. He takes him, amen? And he can't, you know, when you go in the spirit, you actually can go with your body. But most of the time, when you go in the spirit, God takes your spirit and you leave your body and you go somewhere in the spirit. Amen. Glory to God. All right. And that's what's happening to Ezekiel at this moment. And calls me, verse two, and calls me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the valley, in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Excuse me. Let me say that again. Uh, let me start over. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. So this valley was full of bones. And these bones were very dry bones. So they had been there for years. All right. Amen. Verse three. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? What an interesting question. God has taken him to the spirit and seeing these bones, these dry bones, just bones all over the place. And, and, and you know, by the spirit said, can these bones live? All right. Let's see what the prophet said. And I answered, oh, Lord God, thou knowest. And he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And see, this is how prophecy works. Amen. The prophecy is not something that you do yourself. Amen. Prophecy can be. And we'll talk about how prophecy works. One way prophecy, God speaks to you and he commands you what to say. Amen. He, he commands you to and we talked about what prophecy was he commands you what to say he commands you to say let's say these bones shall live amen he commands you to give that uh event amen that's going to come to pass amen so you can hear it amen and you prophesy what the spirit is giving you amen all right because you want to understand what prophecy how to prophesy Again, verse four, and he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. And I say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. So this is an event that's getting ready to happen. Amen. He's speaking a, a event that's getting ready to come to pass. And he heard it. And he spoke it by the commandment of God. Amen. Prophecy. Verse six. And I will say sinews upon you and I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. So I prophesied. As I was commanded. Amen. And that's the way prophecy works. The way it works. Properly, you prophesy as you are commanded by God. Amen. And it says here, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up, up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Amen. So he got another commandment. Amen. Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, 
come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that shit, that they may live. So I prophesy as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Amen. Glory to God. Prophesying. Amen. So the Spirit of the Lord commanded Ezekiel to prophesy, and he prophesied what he commanded. Amen. Now let's go to Numbers chapter 11. Amen. Numbers chapter 11. Because we're going to understand how prophesying works. Amen. And we really understand how prophesying really works. We don't have to go into all those different areas of false prophets or, pro or how prophecy does not work or false prophets or, pro you know, just all that stuff that's not of God. If we understand what is right, we don't have to go, we don't even have to talk about what is wrong. Amen. So we're only talking about what's right this morning. Okay. Numbers chapter 11, verse 24. Amen. Numbers chapter 11, verse 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words. And this is a really bad time because, you know, the people were saying we don't have nothing to eat. They were, they feel like all we have is this manna. God had blessed them with manna, but we all we got is this manna. You know, I'm tired of eating manna. That's what they were saying. And they were complaining to the Lord. They weren't asking for stuff. They were just complaining to the Lord. So it was a very strenuous time, all right? Okay, among the Israelites. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them around, set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Amen. So again, prophesy if there is a if there is a prophet a person who prophesies amen there's a spirit amen that is upon him to prophesy all right glory to god so the prophet has a spirit upon him to prophesy amen you can call it an anointing you can call it the, the spirit of god you can call it a gift but it's something upon that prophet that causes him to prophesy accurately amen and the spirit that's on a prophet can come upon people around him. Amen. Glory to God. By the laying of hands, just by the connection of them being around him, by the commandment of the Lord, the Lord can command the spirit that's on this prophet to come upon the members of the church or the other elders or the other core members or whatever. Amen. But see, this was happening. So the Lord came down. Amen. And commanded that spirit to come upon the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, see, the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Amen. Another way prophecy goes forth, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Amen. And then you will prophesy. Amen. Glory to God. So what you what can happen is God can, you can hear the voice of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord can speak to you. He command you to prophesy. Amen. And you prophesy as you are commanded. Amen. Or the spirit of the Lord can come upon you. Amen. As the spirit, come, spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you can prophesy. All right. Amen. So this is the spirit of prophecy that's coming upon you. All right. Amen. So let's continue. All right. Hey, it's awesome that they prophesied and did not cease. Verse 26. But there remained two other men in the camp. The name of the one Eldad and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them. And they were of them that were written, but went not out into the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. And see, what happened was he called the 70 elders, all right, in, okay? But two of the 70 elders didn't come, all right? You know, uh, whatever reason, they just were not there. But guess what? The Spirit of the Lord came upon them, even though they were not in the same place. Amen. And they prophesied. Amen. Okay. And it was told Moses that these two men are prophesying. All right. Okay. Verse 28. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto them, 
envious style for my sake. So, you know, Joshua had a heart. He really loved Moses. He's trying to protect Moses. But Moses said, don't even worry about it. Don't try. You don't have to protect me in this area, okay? It says, envious thou for my sake, okay? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophecy. God would say, he wants all his people to be prophets. He wants all his people to have the gift of prophecy. He wants all his people to be able to function in prophecy, amen? Glory to God. He wants all the people to go to the highest place, amen? And God said, knowing that me and Pastor Alice, that you will get to the highest place, amen? He doesn't want, God doesn't want you down here. He has made you to be up here, amen? But is if you will submit to him, then you can receive all he has for you. Glory to God. Amen. So Moses says that God will help all people to be prophets, all his people to be prophets. Verse 31. Oh, we'll actually, we'll go to verse 30. And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. And there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp as it were a day's journey on this side and as it were a day's journey on the other side round about the camp and it, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth and the people stood all up all day and all that night and all the next day and they gathered the quails and he that gathered least gathered ten homers and they spread them abroad for themselves round about the camp. Amen. This is a wonderful story. There's more to it. But we're really just going to talk about these verses right now because we're talking about prophecy. Amen. And see, the way the Spirit of God works. Amen. And see, right before he's getting ready to do a miracle, he'll his spirit will come upon a prophet. Amen. Or a spirit will come upon someone. And God will start prophesying what he's getting ready to do. Amen. Glory to God. So what happened was God's Spirit came upon the 70, you know, the 68 and the other two. Amen. Because sometimes God wants you to hear not just from the man of God, Moses. He wants to use you too. Amen. Glory to God. And so what happened was they started prophesying. Amen. And as they prophesied, God did a miracle. Amen. So before God does a miracle, many times he will use someone to prophesy what he's getting ready to do. Amen. Glory to God. Does that make sense? Are you happy? If you listen to the worship, you'd be really happy right now. Amen. Glory to God. Because that was very prophetic. Glory to God. Now, let's go to Second Chron First Chronicles, actually. We're talking about prophesying, how prophecy works. God can speak to you. Amen. And you speak what you're commanded. The Spirit of God can, that, that's on a prophet can come upon you. Amen. And you can begin to prophesy. All right. Now, First Chronicles 25. Now see, we're going to get into some understanding here. See, David had wisdom. Amen. He understand how prophecy works and how the move and how the moving of the spirit works. So, First Chronicles 25, verse one. Moreover. David and the captains of the host separated to the office of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jethuthun. Who should prophesy with hearts, with sorceries, and with symbols? And the number of the workmen, according to their service, was of the sons of Asaph, Sakur, and Joseph, and Nathanian. And Azarila, the sons of Asaph, under the hands of As under the hands of Asaph, which prophesied according to the order of the king. And Jaduthan, the sons of Jaduthan, Jadeliah, and Zerah, and Jeshiah, Hashabiah, and Tatithiah, six under the hands of their father, Jethuthun, and prophesied, excuse me, who prophesied with a harp to give thanks and to praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Glory to God. Now, David understood how prophecy works. Do you understand that you can prophesy with an instrument? Amen. 
And when you prophesy with an instrument, as and of course, as this man or woman are playing this instrument, the Holy Spirit moves upon the people, amen, or moves upon a person, and that person begins to prophesy. So actually, let me put it this way. Let's say God wants to tell me something, okay? God wants to prophesy, right, to me, okay? He wants to prophesy to me, amen? All right, now, there's this Chinese woman who comes, and she speaks Chinese, and she prophesies to me. Now, I don't know Chinese. Okay, I wouldn't understand a word that she said, amen. Now, would God use a Chinese woman to prophesy to me who does not speak English but only speaks Chinese? Only one way would he do it, all right? There's only one way that he would use a Chinese woman to prophesy to me because if God used a Chinese woman and it was of the Lord to come and prophesy to me and she only spoke Chinese, then he will have someone around who knew Chinese and knew English and give me the interpretation. If there's no interpreter, he will not speak through a Chinese woman to me. Amen? Glory to God. Now, this music, amen, when, you, when, a, when a minstrel or someone who's anointed can start playing, the anointing can come, and it's a prophetic language that goes forth, amen? And those, those, and see, people in the audience, even the flowers and the grass and the trees, can start understanding the prophetic that's coming through. Amen. It's beautiful. It's glorious. And Lord is, and God is communicating through the music. Amen. But see, we, even though we love the music, and even though um, the Holy Spirit may be coming upon us, we we're happy. We're inspired re and we're rejoicing, but we don't know why. So God will speak, move upon a person who can interpret what's going on. Amen. So even with music and prophetic music, God is going to send someone or use someone to speak it or to sing it. Amen. Why? So the people can understand it. Amen. Glory to God. So David understood this. If there's men or women who are anointed to play, amen, it will move the Holy Spirit, amen, and then prophecy will come forth. Glory to God, amen. So it has to be someone who's anointed. You know, you just can't play any song. You can't just play any music, and you just can't use any musician, all right? This has to be a man, a woman of God, amen, who has that gift in them, amen. Do you understand? You are we understanding how prophecy works, amen? And that will help you to filter through all the junk, all right, and understand what is of God and what is not, amen? Glory to God. Now, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 10. Amen. First Samuel chapter 10. Verse 5. After that thou shall come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city. And see, the prophet Samuel now is talking to Saul. All right? who was getting ready to be king, all right? Or was, let's see. Yes, he is going to be king. I believe he was not anointed at this time. But anyway, he's talking to Saul. All right, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a sorcery and a tambourine and a pipe and a harp before them. And they and they shall prophesy. So, in other words, he's talking to Saul. He's actually prophesying. You know that, that you know when you go here, this is what's going to happen to you. It's speaking what's going to happen of a future event. Amen. But he's saying to this this the spirit. It says verse six, and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, 
and thou shalt prophesy with them. Amen. So we talked about music. So this is prophets. Amen. They're playing musical instruments. All right. And they're also prophesying. OK. He's saying that, Saul, you're going to walk and meet these guys. All right. And then what's going to happen to you? You're going to start prophesying, too, because the spirit of them is going to start coming upon you. Verse six, we'll read that again. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and shalt be turned into another man. See, I don't know how many people here has really had the Holy Spirit just come upon them. You know, and the Holy Spirit uses you, but it actually turns you into another person. I mean, if you are weak. You know, if you are scared, if you're fragile, if you're not confident, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're bold, you're faithful, you're not afraid, and you go forth in power when the Holy Spirit is upon you. Amen? And then when the Holy Spirit leaves, then you may go back to fearful, <laughs> afraid, and all those sort of things. Amen? But God will use you. Amen? It's wonderful. He will turn you into another man or another woman. Amen? To do what he's called you to do. Amen. I want to read verse six one more time. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. Verse seven. And let it be when these signs are come unto thee that thou do as occasion serve thee for God is with thee. So, you know, Saul was talking to him about being king and, you know, when he. You know, Saul at this time was very shy. He didn't think much of himself. So God, you know, see, God will share with you like this is what happened first. OK, and that will help you to understand when this comes true. I said, well, if this comes true. The other things must going to be true, too. Amen. So it's going to help him to step into this office of kingship. Amen. So we're understanding how prophecy works. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Now, let's go to Acts chapter two. I'm going to start at verse 16. And I want to give a little bit more understanding about prophecy, okay? Because I want to say this again, so it's really in our hearts. Prophecy, you know, the Spirit of the Lord, you can hear what God is speaking to you, amen? And then you speak what you are commanded, all right? And that is prophecy. Another way is the Holy Spirit could come upon you, amen? And you begin to prophesy. Amen. The Holy Spirit can just come upon you individually or the Holy Spirit could be upon another person or like a prophet or a pastor or whatever who has that prophetic gift. And it comes upon you and you can prophesy too. Amen. Other ways is you want that you want the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Amen. But how does it happen? One of the ways is you can find a minstrel, someone who is anointed to play. Amen. And as they play, that the spirit of prophecy can come upon you, and then you can prophesy. Amen? Prophesy. And that can be for other gifts, too. But we're talking about prophesying right now. Now, one thing I want you, because I know there's many ministers listening, many of you are ministers here, and want to understand how this works, okay? So when you are, first you need someone who is anointed to play, all right? Then that person needs to play a song. Or play, or actually, it's going to be a song. Play music that the Holy Spirit will respond to. Holy Spirit is not going to respond to just anything. It can even be a Christian song or Christian music, but it has to play something that the Holy Spirit is going to respond to. Amen. And see, if you want prophecy, the moving of prophecy, then it needs to be just music and not singing. Let me give you something how the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit is not a spirit of confusion. Amen. So he's not going to be singing and talking at the same time. You know, the Holy Spirit doesn't interrupt himself. Do you know that? He just doesn't. Amen. So he's going to be playing music. Amen. So he can speak. But if somebody's singing and somebody's speaking, that's confusion. He's not the author of confusion. It's going to, it just needs to be just music. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. When me and Pastor Alice ministers, you know, we're ministering. You know, we never interrupt each other. She speaks and I speak. I speak, then she speaks. And God always gives an open door when he gives me something she's speaking. And I know an opening is going to come and then I can speak that. But we don't interrupt each other or, you know, try to get in front. No, that's not the spirit of God. The spirit of God is a gentleman. Amen. And see, the thing about it is when you're ministering and if you if God gives you something, 
you're going to have the opportunity to do it. So you have to use your flesh. Oh, God just gave me something. I got to push you out the way. I just got to give what God told me to do. No, you don't have to do that. No, he's going to give you the opportunity to speak it. Amen. Because he is God. All right. And if he gave you the word, he's going to do everything that he can that you can give that word. So you don't have to use your force or whatever you're trying to do to get it out. No. Wait for the opportunity. And the opportunity to come. And you just walk through that open door and speak what he told you to speak. Amen. And that's the way the gifts works. So that should cancel out a whole lot of stuff that maybe you have seen. OK, but no, no, but they're really popular or oh, everybody else likes them. But I'm telling you, this is the way the Holy Spirit moves. So you won't be caught up in junk. All right. Now, are we in Acts chapter two? All right. Verse 16. All right. We're talking about prophecy. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And O oh, my servants, and on my handmaids will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Amen. And see, many people, some people I've heard, they think that everybody in the world is going to prophesy, and everybody in the world is going to dream dreams. It's not really what this is saying. Let's read it again. But in but this is what which the but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And so you, you, first you may say everyone, but then listen to it. It says here, and your sons. Amen. So it's not everybody's sons. It's God's people's sons and daughters. Okay. All right. So it's not like the evil people in the world are going to be prophesying. That's not what God is doing right now. Okay. Or ever, actually. All right. Now. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Is this the last days? It is. So this is a prophecy that's getting ready to come to pass. Amen. Glory to God. Now say it. What the prophet Joel said. Let's go back to the Old Testament and see what Joel said. All right. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. I'll wait till you get there. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. I'll read that again. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed, so you will never be ashamed. Amen. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also will the servants, and also upon the servants, upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. Amen. See, you know, we know here. That God is in the midst. Amen. There's different manifestations that God is with us. Amen. But what is one manifestation that we can say that God is with us? Amen. That he will pour out his spirit upon us. Amen. That's one of the manifestations. All right. Well, we're going to talk about it a little bit more later. Amen. Now, do we all have a good understanding of prophecy and what prophesying is? Amen. Now we want to get to prophecy. Now, prophecy is the prediction that is spoken or written. 
Now that's the definition. The prediction, remember, is a speaking of uh, an event that's getting ready to happen, all right? Now, you know, prophesying is a speaking of an event that's getting ready to happen. But prophecy is the prediction that was spoken or written. And now, in these days, we can also say recorded, all right? So in other words, they say that, they go back to that prophecy. That prophecy that we saw a young boy that was 10 years old, the man of God said, this young boy is going to be a preacher one day. Amen. That's a prophetic word. All right. That's a prophesy. The man who spoke was prophesied. Now, what is a prophecy? The prophecy is what was spoken. The prophecy is what was spoken out of the man's mouth. Amen. And see, it's very important to understand when you have a prophecy, what do you do with it? All right. You know, and like the song said, you believe it. And there's some instruction in it. You act in it. Amen. So you have the prophecy. So now you heard what God has said. And you have this prophecy that this boy is going to be a preacher. Amen. Glory to God. What do you do with it? Amen. But that is prophecy. It is what is spoken and, you know, what is written. Because, you know, a man, maybe the man was in another city. And by the Spirit, he's prophesied about this young boy. And then he wrote a letter. To the mom and said, by the spirit of the Lord, I prophesy that your son is going to be a preacher one day. So it's it's still a word, but it's written. Amen. So you can read a prophetic word. All right. And these days it's spoken. It's written. But now also it's recorded. You can listen to it like um, maybe on your iPod or, you know, it could be like if someone spoke, it, it could be recorded. Your voice can be recorded that way or whatever. But anyway, it's that it is what was spoken. Amen. Glory to God is the prophecy. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 says, we're going back to 1 Corinthians. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. So the prophecies are given to you to profit, to benefit you. So if you're getting a prophecy from God, it's, it's a happy time. It's to profit you. Amen? Glory to God. Amen. It's to profit you. And it all is prophecy, you know. Prophecy can be a warning. You know, if you go down this road, continue down this road, you're going to die in 10 days, you know. And so you need to stop going down that road. <laughs> so that's still good, isn't it? Prophecy is to benefit you. It's to, pro it's to profit you. All right, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. And you don't have to turn there. I'll just read it. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. If you're listening to the prophetic word, if that written word, whatever it is, the prophecy that you have, that God has given you. Remember now, the prophecy that God has given you, amen, will benefit you and you will prosper when you act on the prophecies that God has given you, amen? Amen. Now, you listen to the prophecies you know, you heard what God said to your sister or God said to your brother. You know, this necessarily doesn't want to benefit you. It may, depending on what it is. All right. But you want to know the prophecies that God has given you. Amen. Our church want the prophecies that God has given our church. You know, you hear something on the radio, you hear something on TV, God is prophesying to another church. Say, oh, 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 you know. But no, we want what God is prophesying to us. Amen. Glory to God. You want what God is prophesying to you. Amen. Not the person beside you. I mean, you rejoice for that person, but you want what God has for you. Amen. And when you get what God has for you and you believe in it and act on it, if there's an action that needs to be taken, you will prosper. Glory to God. Amen. All right. Now, and in this story in 2 Chronicles, we're not going to go there, but they prospered greatly. Said, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall you be established. Believe as prophets, and so shall you prosper. And they did, they believed God, they believed the prophecy, and they went forth, and they were three days and taking the spoil. Amen. They prospered greatly because they listened to the prophetic word. They believed in it and they acted on it. All right. Glory to God. Now, last verse. Ezra chapter 6, verse 14. And um, I'm 
All right. Ezra chapter 6, verse 14. Ezra chapter 6, verse 14. All right. And the elders of the Jews build and they, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Idu. And they build and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerus. King of Persia. I want to read that again. And the elders of the Jews build and they prophesied and they, excuse me, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Idu. And they build and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel, according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerus. King of Persia. Amen. So, is prophecy a good thing? Amen. Now, what we're going to do right now, and we do have someone who really can play prophetically, and they're on the way. We are going to let the minstrel play, and then God is going to move upon you. And as God moves upon you, you will prophesy. Amen. Glory to God. See, we have so much. You know, so, so many people don't know what to do. They don't know where they're going. They have so many questions. They can't get answers. But see, you serve a God who knows all things and will lead you into a very prosperous and wonderful land. Amen. Another reason why the Lord will speak to you is because he's here. He, show, he wants to show you that he's with you. He wants to show you that he's in the midst. And one of the ways he shows you that he's in the midst is the Spirit of God comes upon you. And he prophesies. He speaks. Amen. See, you know, usually God is not going to. Usually he's not, he's not going to speak where everyone in church hears him. I mean, it can happen. All right. But what he normally will do is that the Spirit of God will come upon a person and that person will speak what God is speaking to that church. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So what we're going to do, I want you to prepare yourselves. And this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. It's not something I thought up. It's something that God had prepared for the beginning of this church, that this is what he was going to do. Now, you on the Internet audience, you say, wow, I wish I was there. I wish God would speak to me. I wish I understood these things. But you know, just submit yourself to the Lord and the Holy Spirit may come upon you and you may begin to prophesy. You may begin to prophesy to your family. You may begin to prophesy to your situation. You may begin to prophesy to your um, to, to the people in your home. You know, you may be you may even prophesy to your appliances, whatever, you know, speak to the speak to the washing machine that doesn't work. I could, you know, in the name of Jesus, you're going to start working in 10 minutes. <laughs> Amen. And then it'll start working. Amen. Glory to God. So I want to share something with you, okay? Really. See, these are holy moments. Amen. Glory to God. These are holy, precious moments that God speaks to his people. Amen. So what we're going to do again, as the minstrel plays, the Spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you. Amen. And see, remember, the Spirit of the Lord makes you a new person. So you don't have to be afraid. Oh, what's, what's going to happen? I'm going to get it right. I'm going to no. If the Holy Spirit is touching you, amen, just speak what God gives you. That's all you have to do. Amen. You know, oh, i got to make it. You know, I could, it got to sound pretty. It got to rhyme. You know, it's got to be in old English or whatever. I got to speak pop. No, just speak what God has given you. Amen. But that's all it is. It's simple. Amen. You know, when God speaks, it's easy to understand what he just said. Amen. All right. OK. So do we all have faith? Amen. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I have given the word to your people that you've given me to preach. And I prophesy. That your people will begin to prophesy just as Samuel 
prophesied to Saul that he would prophesy when he heard the music. So I prophesied that your people, as they hear this music, your spirit will come upon them and make them another man, another woman, and they will prophesy accurately what you have given them to speak in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we want to kind of prepare for this. Um, since this is recorded, I don't believe we have to have someone who writes. We used to do that, but um, I believe that that's okay. I guess the sound is okay. So, um, But the other thing is this, too. Remember when the, when the prophecy comes forth, what do you do with it, okay? Now, we are understanding that the prophecies are coming forth or prophecies because the Spirit of God has come upon the person, okay? All right? And it's an accurate prophecy, okay? And I'm glad the children, even God wanted the children to be here. He said he wants the children to be, you know, because sometimes you use your natural mind. Well, you know, no, he said, let the children be here too. He had prepared this from the beginning. Amen. So, uh, Blake, could you come and play, please? And as a man of God who is anointed of God to comes to play, the Spirit of God is going to come upon and speak. So, amen. Okay. But this is going to be the mic that you're going to use. I want to pray this song. He's getting ready. Let's pray in tongues. Why are you preparing for yourself? Amen. So just relax. There's no pressure. Let the Holy Spirit come upon you. You know, God may be upon you in such a way that you just come to the mic while he's upon you, and then you'll speak before you even get it. But um, just trust in the Lord as he comes upon you. Amen.
ke talamoshi te ke pepe kola mashi te ka pa talamashi te ka tolamashi te i prophesy as the lord has commanded me today i prophesy to the four winds and i command the winds to come forth to breathe life into those that are slain right now in the mighty name of jesus i prophesy life to dry bones in jesus name I prophesy that they will rise up and that they will walk in the authority and power of the mighty name of Jesus. I command the winds to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Who katalamashite to breathe on the slain that they will rise up now. Evangelists, rise up. Pastors and preachers, rise up. Prophets come from the mountains. That the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be shouted on the rooftops. And in the houses, let them shake. The power of God be upon them now. In Jesus' name, even the children, they will come forth and speak the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name.
God, I prophesy you will heal the land. God, I prophesy that they will hear your word across the nations in the name of Jesus. Your people will know your word is truth. Send forth your sons and daughters in Jesus' name. Hearken your word in Jesus' name. shall prosper and avail in all that you do. And nothing to trouble you or stand in your way. No obstacle shall prevail. forth in Jesus' name, the sons and daughters into the house of prayer ministries. Right now, in Jesus' name.
Amen. Lord says it's going to be, he's going to use five people. So we've had three. So the Holy Spirit's going to move on at least two more. And Blake, if it comes upon you, just take the mic. If, you know, if God moves upon you, okay? Praise God. Children of the living God, now is the time. Now is the time to take back everything that's been taken from us. for us to take back the loss and the broken. This is a season. So Heavenly Father, I pray for the lost Lord Jesus. I pray for the brokenhearted Lord Jesus. I pray for anybody who is trying to seek your face, Lord Jesus. We are the true church. And we'll be used for his glory. How awesome is that going to be for us?
know these are the last days. I pray that the Spirit will move around your sons and daughters and come upon your sons and daughters. I pray that the Spirit will confirm Pray that the Spirit will move mountains, Lord. I pray for those who need to hear you more audibly, Lord, that they hear you, Lord, and they come to you. I pray that your sons and daughters will always know that you are at their right hand, Lord. And they will always be covered under your wings. You are their protection, Lord. I prophesy that they know, and this will be clear to them, that you are the one and the only one. And they receive Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank all of you for coming forth as the Lord has led you. Amen. Now we're talking about prophecy and how prophecy works. You know, we are a church of prophecy. It happens to us almost maybe every Sunday that the word has been spoken, has been prophesied to people, to churches, to different situations. There's one more way that you can prophet, prophesy. Now, And those are people who walk in the office of the prophet. Amen. It's a little bit different when you walk in the office because you can be using prophecy. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you'll prophesy. Or God will command you what to speak and you'll prophesy. Amen. So the Holy Spirit comes upon you or God speaks to you. But the person who walks in the office of the prophet, they begin to speak and it's prophecy. In other words, their voice activates the Holy Spirit. Just like music activates the Holy Spirit, when a prophet begins to speak, they just open their mouth and the Holy Spirit is activated and they begin to prophesy. That's the person who walks in the office of the prophet. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And glory to God. And thank you, Jesus. I prophesy that we will have 10 billionaires 10 billionaires among the members that are already here amen I prophesy that the people who are searching for God will find this place I prophesy to I just see I just see heads of people I don't know what to call them, but I prophesy to all these heads of people that they will come and find God in the house of prayer ministries in Jesus' name. I prophesy that the power angels will come into the house of prayer ministries to do exploits in Jesus' name and miracles. I prophesy that the angels of influence and favor will come into the house of prayer ministries and, jo and, and draw the resources and draw the people who have resources. I prophesy. Mm, I prophesy to the winds. As Pastor Alice already did. But I prophesy to the winds that they will blow in prosperity to this church. I prophesy to the winds that it will blow uh, that they will blow in provision to this church. I prophesy to the winds that it will blow in a greater anointing in this place. I prophesy the angels of healing in the name of Jesus will come to this church and there will not be a, a what's that word? A feeble, that's the word. There will not be a feeble person in this church. I prophesy when we get our church, 
We will not have a handicapped place because there will be no members of the handicapped in this church. They may come, but they'll leave whole. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that every member in this church will be prosperous in Jesus' name. And I prophesy that there'll be two people that are not in this service will come back with a prophecy because the Spirit of the Lord has come upon them and they cannot contain what was given. They have to speak it out. So I prophesy there'll be two people. They may call. They may write. They may contact us. Maybe this time they come, they got a prophetic word that God has given them for this church. In Jesus' name, it's done. Amen. Glory to God. Do you believe it? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, is there any others that will prophesy? I prophesy. I saw it in the spirit. Okay, this is what I saw. I prophesy what I saw that Miles will stand up and prophesy. So it may not be today, but he will may, may be in your home. He'll stand up and say, Mom, Dad, hear what God has just told me. You'll prophesy your future. You'll prophesy what's going to happen in Jesus' name. I saw it. I saw it. Oh, oh, go ahead. Praise God. I, I saw what you saw. I saw Miles coming up, taking the mic, and prophesying in the church today. Amen. Today, I saw it today. I saw it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But you know what? You have to be willing. So we'll wait on that. Amen. Prophecy goes forth, and it's available to the young man. And we're not going to put any pressure on. But it will happen. It was today or the next Sunday. It happened in your home. It is going to happen, parents. He is going to prophesy. I know you got a praying warrior and eating robes that everything he prays come to pass. But you also have a prophet, too, that everything he prophesies comes to pass. Amen. God bless the children. God bless the children. God bless the children. I see your, see your children coming to this church. Holy children. Children that are filled with the Spirit. I prophesy that parents all over will bring their children to this church in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Prophets. 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 Prophets are coming to this church in the name of Jesus. Prophets who are blown it. Prophets that don't know how to carry their anointing. They're going to come and their gift. I prophesy prophets from all over will come and will be true prophets in the house of prayer ministries. I prophesy it in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, are there any other, I know, um, are there any others that we may... Before we close this out, any others? Amen. Glory to God. Are you holding your hand up? Okay. All right. Amen. I saw two things in the spirit as uh, the Lord had me kneel. First thing I saw was I saw a, um, I just saw like a, a plant. It was looked like a plant at first, and the stem was going up, and it was barren, but immediately this beautiful, beautiful leaves just begin to just form on it and form on it and form on it and form on it, like going all the way up. And I couldn't see the end of it. And he said that the life giving spirit is here. Anyone who comes in with their barren or anything is barren, it, it cannot be barren in this house. It cannot be barren in this house. It will produce. And not only will it produce, but it will produce excellence. Second thing I saw, I saw look like water. But as I continue to look at the water, it turned into, I saw, uh, I saw heads i saw bodies in the water and that's how he was that represents the sons that are coming in here it's the sons and daughters are coming in as a river as a flood is going to come in so fiercely in this church and they're going to be filled with life and refreshed as it's already been said just confirming can be refreshed and also that there, there are apostles that will be coming too apostles coming and they'll be sent out 
but they're going to learn order here. They're going to learn and receive all the tools, be equipped and be sent with fire. And fires will be started all around the world and around this nation. Fires, towns will be set on fire. Towns will be set on fire. The glory of God will be resonant and present, overpowering the evil in cities and in principalities. It's going to be overtaken by the glory of God and the holiness of our King. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Ministries will be birthed all around the world, all around the world. This ministry will have influence with kings and princes, hmm. with the airwaves all around the world and around this nation. Even the news, we have authority and favor over the media and the news. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And it says, and we talked about in, um, in the scriptures, that they profit, profited because of the prophesying. Amen. Because now the prophet, prophecy that's come forth, what are you going to do with it? You have to believe it. Amen. You have to walk it. If there's any instruction, whatever, you will believe it, you walk in it, and you prosper. Amen. Because of the prophecies that were given. And a couple of more things before we um, go to the next thing. Prophecy. Because God wants you to understand how prophecy works. See, like, you can see in the spirit. And so God is giving you information, you know, he's giving you revelation. And what you can do is you prophesy what you just saw. Amen. Or you can speak it into existence by your words. Amen. See, prophecy is speaking. Amen. God may give you a prophetic dream. Amen. And then what do you do? You get up and prophesy the dream that you just saw or you speak it into existence. Amen. Prophecy is so powerful. Amen. See, the people prospered because of the prophetic words. Amen. That's how we, we prophesy. We, so the work, so the church can be edified, so it can be exhorted, so it can receive um, exhortation, edification, and um, comfort. Thank you. Comfort. Amen. But it's for your benefit. Amen. It's for your benefit. Glory to God. Amen. Now, are there any prayer requests? Yes. Okay, In the name of Jesus, I speak sensitivity to his spirit, Father, in Jesus' name, to his heart and his mind, that you that he will know what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's pray in tongues. No, no. Let's pray. Let's continue praying, Tom. I command the barriers to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Let it fall off in Jesus' name. Whatever blocking God's presence, I command it to go in Jesus' name. I pray sensitivity to his body, Father. Sensitivity to the spirit. 
in Jesus' name, Jesus name. that he will know that you are God. And he will know your presence in Jesus' name. Holiness, Lord, in Jesus' name. A holy vessel unto the Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. He feels God's presence. Now, in the name of Jesus, I command everything that's not right with him to get right in the name of Jesus. He will be a new man in 24 hours in Jesus' name. Look at the time and see if he's not a new man in 24 hours in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Now, headache. It, it, it feels about the same, but I believe. All right. Thank you for believing. Go! Go! In Jesus' name, go. Amen. In a few seconds. All right. How's it feel now? It feels better than it did. All right. Let's pray in tongues. In the name of Jesus, is leaving. It's stress. It, you gotta let the stress go. You got some path. You gotta let the stress go. I know you feel like the weight of the world is on. You gotta let it go, man. God's got you. We all make mistakes. We we all blow it sometimes. Hey, don't we? Yeah, you know, Pastor Alice says yes. He blows it sometimes. Yes, you know we're all people, but we got a God that makes us perfect. You gotta let the stress go. You are a man of God. You're gonna be a wealthy man of God. You are approved by God. Amen. No more stress. I command stress. I command a in the name of Jesus. go in Jesus', Jesus name. name. No more weights. No more burdens. He is a man of God. He is received of God. Yes. He is approved of God. Yes. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. name. Bring the joy of the Lord, Father. Yes, in, Lord. Jesus in Jesus' name. Oh, let him have your Amen. confidence, Father. Jesus was very confident in who yes. he was. Amen. Let the confidence of God come into yes, his heart, Lord. Father, in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Knowing who he is, that he is approved of God. Yes, Lord. In Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, the head, how does that feel? It, it, feels, it feels better than before. It's so it's, it's not pain. It feels better than before. It feels better. In 24 hours, you'll be a new man. All right, Pastor Alice. Amen. The Lord wanted me to speak to this ear area. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just speak to this ear area right now. We command healing, Lord God. Healing to this area right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Take away anything that's not like you, Lord. In Jesus' name, fill this area, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that his ears are open. The Lord says that you're a prophet for the nations. Thank you, Lord, for drawing out anything that's in this ear area that is gone. In the mighty name of Jesus, I see it leaving now. In Jesus' name, I see it leaving now. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord God, Restore. Restore right now, Lord God. Restore with your mighty power. I feel the fire of God. Thank you for your power, Lord. And your healing anointing upon his body. In Jesus' name. It's done. It's done. Amen. 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 All right. How do you feel? You feel good? Amen. Glory to God. God's making you a new person. He's making you a new man. He's restoring who you he, he intended you to be. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, as God speaks to you, just believe him. Don't, if the situations look not that way. If the, even if you feel a certain way, believe what God said. You live in what God has told you. That's what you live in. 
you know, your faith is in what God has said, not in what you see always. Amen. All right. You are a man of faith. Amen. Okay. He's going to use you. Glory to God. Amen. Do you believe that? Glory to God. All right. First, first thing I saw as pastor, he was praying and he, he was praying over you and his hand on your head. I saw a white, it was like white ring. It, like it went, literally went through your head. I saw it go through your head. So the power was released. It's done. So understand and believe as Pastor Ray was saying, believe it because I saw it. It's done. The power of God manifested. Also, God's going to make you abound in confidence. He's going to make you bold. And he also is speaking once again about, about Samson. He said, he said, remind him, Samson, you are Samson. You're not like Samson. You are. You, you're walking in that power and that authority. So as he comes and moves upon you, you've been empowered to do. And they empowered to do. Amen. Amen. And that was from the Lord. Amen. Now, a new man. Amen. That people cannot corrupt, that people cannot destroy by the actions or by the words or whatever, you are a man of God and nobody can change that. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Amen. It's done. It is done. Amen. God bless you, man of God. All right. Okay. So now, are there any per other prayers before we get to our offering? Okay. You may be seated. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. There's one more prophetic word I'm going to give. And those are the people who are givers here. And I know that you have some testimonies of what God has done. But I'm prophesying to the people who give here that now God will increase or will increase you in such a way that it will be even embarrassable that God will fill your bank accounts, that God will fill your purses and your wallets, that God will fill your storehouses in such a way that whatever you want to give, you'll be able to give. Amen. You'll never have to say, <laughs> you know how it is when you go to the uh, stores and you don't have to look at the price tag, you know what I mean? Um, maybe a I hope y'all have been that way. But if you're not, it's a great it's a great feeling. You know, usually some you like that east sometime in your life, at least for a little while. You don't have to look at the price tag. Just get what you want. If it's a good deal, you know, whatever, it's good quality. I'm gonna get it. Amen. You can go to church and say, I'm just gonna give what I want to give. Amen. I don't have to worry about what's in my bank account. Amen. God's going to bless your life. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that this church will be able to give what they want to give in Jesus' name. I decree it. I declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now we're going to have our offering by Minister Carlton Cogdell. Amen and amen. Uh, you can find the mic here somewhere. Amen. Amen. Praise God for offering time. Amen. This is a blessed time. We come with expectations to give on today. Amen. If you are, if you need an envelope, raise your hand and Minister Nicholas Wilder will be glad to assist you. Amen. And for those here, don't forget to put today's date on the envelope. It's April 22nd, 2018. Amen. And we're going to be coming from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. And for those online, you can pay by going on to raylsmith.org and there click on donation. And you can make your checks out to, or money orders out to HOP Ministries or the House of Prayer Ministries. Amen. And once again, come from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. And the backstory for anyone that may not know, oh, this, this is Adam and Eve, and this is going to 
show Adam and Eve's children, Cain and Abel. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first fling of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Amen. Amen. We see here that Abel's offering was accepted by the Lord, but Cain's offering was not accepted. And we saw and we see here that Cain was wroth. Cain was not happy that his offering was not accepted. But let's look why. Abel was led by the Lord. He gave what the Lord wanted. Thus, his offering was accepted by God. Cain gave out of his natural means. Cain was the tiller of the ground, and he gave out of his natural means. He gave what he thought God wanted. He gave what he felt he was able to give God. But with God, he wants what he wants. He wants us to be led by him so that when we give an offering, it's what he wants. So whatever the amount is, what, no matter how large or how small, if God says it, that's what he wants. Amen. Now, when we give our offerings, we get, we get blessed. God will bless us back for what we do. Give it, it shall be given unto you. But we do this not for the blessings. We do this because we love God and he loves us. Amen. Amen. And if you're ready to give, raise your hands and Minister Nicholas Waddle will be glad to assist you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we love you. We thank you for who you are, Lord God. Thank you, God, for you. Thank you, God, that you made a way, God, to give. Thank you, Lord God, for tithes, Lord God, that we can give to you, Lord God was rightfully yours, Lord God, that we can be great stewards of what you've given us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that we believe you and we trust you, Lord God, and that we give in the right spirit, Lord God. Thank you, God, that you accept this offering unto you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. May you be glad. May you be pleased. May all the honor and glory go to you. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And at this time, we'll have an announcement by Jasmine Riddick. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, just a quick few updates on our announcements. On May 12th, the Ladies First Bible Study will have broken to beautiful event of ministry, jewelry making, and fellowship at the Anderson's home. The address is 425 Stone Monument Drive, Wake Forest, North Carolina. The men's meeting will meet on May 19th at 10 a.m. We will be ministering at Britain's Gardens Nursing Home next Saturday, April 28th at 10 a.m. The address to there is 3101 Dur Raleigh Road, Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and if you would like to stay in touch with our ministry, please come and see me. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I want to add to those announcements. And um, we know this is a technology or uh, age of media, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, for those who uh, have Twitter accounts or Facebook accounts or YouTube, follow us on YouTube. Friend us on our um ministry page, our public image page, if you don't mind. And also on our Twitter, you can do that too. But the thing about this, this is one of the most important things. If you've been touched by this ministry, amen, you know, tell someone. 
And social media is a great way to tell it. So let's say you felt God's presence or, you know, you got a blessing or whatever. You know, just um, on our YouTube or on our Facebook or whatever, give your testimony. Amen. Glory to God. It would be so wonderful. And you'd be giving glory to God. Amen. All right, so have you received the word that was preached to you this morning? Amen. Glory to God. All right, then I pray or I speak that you will receive some 30, some 60, some 100 full harvest in Jesus' name. Everyone stand. Amen. I speak that your people will be prosperous from this day forth until you come from heaven. I speak that your light will shine upon your people. And grace, mercy, and truth will always be pillars in their life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone hugs someone. God bless your internet audience.